So welcome to learning about post-hypnotic suggestion. So post-hypnotic suggestion is a very basic tool for hypnotists. The thing is, it's possibly the most in un misunderstood aspect of hypnosis and the most powerful way to receive an instant transformation. Now, not all sessions require a PHS and a lot of hypnotists are actually afraid to use them in case the hypnotic suggestion doesn't stick, okay? And some therapists are really unsure of when's the best time to use them during their session to increase the chances of the, su of the suggestion actually being accepted and then acted upon. So many therapists are actually afraid to use a PHS and don't even really know what's the most effective PHS to actually use. Or you could be like me when I first started and it was very hit and miss. I had some phenomenal stories with quit smokers and then I had some outright duds. And when it came to the PHS, I was like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Like, what the hell have I done wrong here? And what am I missing? And why is this all going so badly? Why am I getting some great results with some clients and really, really crap ones with others? And I started to think of it like this. So a hammer is just one tool, but without it, you're going to struggle to hit the nail on the head. So I then went on to learn the 11 steps um, of the unconscious mind and the PHS system. And this is what we call dancing with the subject's unconscious. So what is a post-hypnotic suggestion? A post-hypnotic suggestion is given during a hypnotic trance to be unconsciously acted upon out of hypnosis. So you create a suggestion for the unconscious mind to take on. And then once the hypnosis is done and dusted, then that person will no longer drink Diet Coke or they will no longer get angry and frustrated or nervous or anxious when they get on airplanes and things like that. It's a powerful instruction that causes you to act in a certain way once the hypnosis is done. Once the hypnosis is done, it is done. And it, you can even feel and create a feeling to do a specific behavior behavior as well. So if you've got somebody who wants to uh, stop eating Mars bars because it's bad for their health, then you can actually help them with that. But the one thing that's important to remember when using a PHS is not all PHS suggestions are created equally. Okay. So just because that's what your client is telling you, that's what they want. That doesn't mean it's created equal for the unconscious to take it on. So there's a fine line between an artful PHS where a person feels compelled to act upon it and a PHS where a client just jumps for joy over it and it kind of just wears off after a couple of weeks. So I was taught the Ericsson model of nesting loops, stories within stories. You will notice most of my work has been layered with metaphors and as you look through the manual, which you can get with the link when you sign up for the certified course, you'll notice that there are a lot of layered metaphors in that manual and this is to induce what we call hypnotic amnesia so hypnotic amnesia is available in the advanced training in the modern mentoring so this means you can place a well-crafted phs within the stories being told so a phs should only be used to complement good hypnotherapy techniques and practices so be a high quality therapist over the money grabber there are many many people out there that are doing this whole you know, quit smoking and 60 minutes and then it will give you a lifetime guarantee and blah, 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 blah. To me, they're not high quality therapists because at the end of the day, once the hypnosis is done, the hypnosis is done. And a well-crafted PHS can actually get that client the good results that they're looking for. You shouldn't have to offer a guarantee when you're in rapport with the client, when you have that prestige, and they're actually doing all the work in between sessions that is required. They'll get their results, okay? So be a high-quality therapist over a money-grabbing therapist. So for a good PHS to be effective, you must hit the client at the identity level and then back it up. A lot of people know, but don't use knowledge. You can tell people what it is and that is bad for them and that the desire is too great and the, the desire will always win. But knowing tomato is a fruit, knowledge is knowing not to put it on fruit salad. There is a difference with a well-crafted PHS. If you're creating a PHS specific for your client, you simply ask them. I tell my client, I have an opportunity to help reach your goal today. Let's say you have defeated this problem. How do you see yourself in the future? So from here, I begin to negotiate a PHS with the client. As long as it's positive and in their own words, it will get a great result. The best way to start a PHS is each and every day I will and then insert the good stuff. So each and every day I will go for a mindful walk, for a mindful walk helps my mind to clear. 
really cool, isn't it? <laughs> that is well-constructed hypnosis techniques and NLP wording. So here are the 11 steps that were shown to me, okay? Number one, establish the outcome. What does your client want? What is the reason that they are coming to you? Now, what specifically do they want? If they say, I just want to be happier, okay, smile. You're happier, give me 10 bucks, you're done, okay? So make sure you get really, really specific as to what it is that they want. If it's to save money or because of a spouse or something like that, it's not going to work, okay? It's what do they want? What does your client see themselves as in the future without this problem? And if they go on a tangent of, I don't know, or there's no real desire, send them packing. This problem is not big enough for them to want to change it. And this might be harsh, but it is true. There will be no change without this decision being made fully and sol solidly and with 100% commitment. So take your time to work out the end goal and any beliefs that may get in the way of the suggestion sticking. So if there's any one seed of doubt, one tiny little weed that may grow, then this PHS is not going to stick and the unconscious mind is not going to take it on. So negotiate backwards and forwards some of these goals and what it is that they're going to do, okay? You don't eat one salad and you suddenly become skinny. It's all about repetition. So build up a solid outcome for the for the client when they're seeing themselves out in the future a solid outcome that's that's not negotiable this is exactly how it's going to look so no amount of PHS will stick without the solid outcome. And if there's any doubt, you have to reconstruct the doubt and then keep on going until you find that sentence where the client's like, okay, each and every day I will choose healthy foods because healthy foods help make me feel good. Okay, keep negotiating and make sure it is in a positive light. Step number two is to flip your switch. Your state of mind needs to be supportive. Now, I'm not talking about the words you speak. I'm talking about your physiology and your environment. Your physiology is communicating a non-verbal level of great things that are about to happen. So if you're lethargic and distracted or emotionally not invested 100% into your client, maybe you're sitting there and you're yawning in the chair or something like that, they're going to pick up on this. So if you're thinking, I get to finish in an hour, it's my weekend soon, your client will pick, um, pick up on this and you are not 100% invested in this client's outcome. So your client will mirror these actions in a subconscious manner and you need to change that up. So flip your switch, feel confident, send positive vibes, get excited about what they're going to be doing in the future, have some compassion and knowledge within it. The third step, step is therapeutic work. If your client has objections to the positive changes, you will need to do some therapeutic work. So this is where a great pre-talk comes in. This is why I promote pre-talks and you'll learn about that in the previous mo modules. So this is where a great pre-talk can come in. And as this is basic training in hypnosis and NLP therapeutic uh, processes, you will need to be um, doing more advanced training in the modern mentoring. But make sure you get a great pre-talk got up and running. You've been taught this already, but if you want some more advanced stuff, jump on the modern mentoring. Step number four is known as the ABS. Now, I'm not talking about your stomach abs or the braking system in your car, okay? If these are the three things that you must do before engaging a PHS. So the A is attention. Absorb your subject's attention. If you ask your client to stay in hypnosis and then all of a sudden they're, they're like, no, nah, this is not working, say to them, Close your eyes, this works, and they'll close their eyes. Make sure that you have their full attention at all times. Once they've gone into that state where they've gone deeper and deeper and they've, you've done, um, like, you know, all, you've taken them through the forest and all this sort of stuff, you're going to do the letter B, which is bypass the critical fac faculty. Your client will begin to nod their head as they agree to the story, and this means that you have bypassed the CF. So if you say to them as you go down and down and down, please nod your head when you are ready. This means that you have bypassed the critical faculty, okay? Drop them into trance, and as they begin to nod, I'd say to them, now close your eyes, and if they've already got their eyes closed, just say to them, now drop your shoulders down and go deeper and deeper. Ensure that they are following the commands so that you know you have bypassed the CF, okay? And continue with your story and moving in with your induction. 
S is known to stimulate the unconscious mind. You're getting the unconscious mind to perform the actual change work. This will help you to get your subject's unconscious on board as your suggestions. So AKA, this is trance. Don't be afraid to say to your client, as you're walking through the forest, you come to a door. Tell me now, what color is the door? Red. You have already bypassed the CF, okay? If they are struggling to get that answer, they need to a few seconds to click in their mind to answer the question. That's because you will notice that they're actually starting to use their unconscious mind. They're actually using their imagination. You'll notice it with their eyes as well. Their eyes will be moving inside their sockets looking for this information that is absolutely crucial. Now, if you ask your client to look for the door and they're like, Red, you haven't bypassed the CF. So continue to relax them deeper and deeper and deeper until you get that answer where they're like, oh, blue. It's a very relaxed answer, okay? You will know it when it's coming along. Step number five is hypnotic context. This is breaking down the client's wants to achieve into small steps, okay? Studies show that introducing small change is more beneficial in the long term than big change. So break down what your client is wanting into small achievable steps. So for example, before you've even started the hypnotic trance or anything like that, you're going to negotiate backwards and forwards what it is that they want. So your client may want to walk for an hour every day of the week. You start your PHS with small steps and then slowly make them bigger as you go through your sessions. So a good example is to begin with, you will you will walk through you will take the car and you will park it at the furthest park from the store and then you'll walk briskly to the store. This small amount of walking will increase your steps during the day and you will gain better health results. So start with small steps. There's absolutely no point in saying to a client, radio from now on you're never going to eat sugar again, you're going to live off broccoli and chicken. That is a message for disaster. Get them to do it in small steps. So if you're negotiating with your client before the hypnosis has even begun and they're like, every Every day I want to go for a one hour walk, just start with them and say, radio, so on the first day you will do a five minute walk. On the second day you will do a six minute walk. On the third day you will do a seven minute walk. Break them in slowly. What you'll often find is that over a period of six to 12 months they would have achieved more and for long term results than if you'd actually just said to them, yep, no worries, you will walk every day for an hour. That is a message for disaster and that's like learning how to run before you can even crawl. Number six is clear behavior. This can be taught as a feeling or even perception. At the start of the session, you always establish with your client the future. Ensure that it is in a positive way and, and it is very clearly defined. There's no point in saying, I want to be happier. Like I said before, you just get them to smile, you're done, now what? Okay, be very specific with your client. This will help them to become happier. What are they doing? Define the whole scenario, the whole scene, so that their behavior can happen clearly. A PHS is very valuable over multiple sessions as each identity can be defined and enhanced. So what exactly does your client want that is in the positive sense? So if they want to do fitness more, they want to feel good about themselves, get them to imagine themselves putting on their fitness gear and feeling really good about it and how comfortable it is and how it gives them energy and stuff like that. Step number seven is to attach the behavior to a trigger. Think of this as cause and effect, like you learned at the start. When X happens, Y will happen. It's kind of like just a gift they received. So there are more advanced training techniques on this in the modern mentoring about triggers and things like that. If you'd like to jump on that, please tap on the link. Eight is called gaining acceptance. No matter how great a PHS is, your client's unconscious mind can still reject it. This will occur if there's a block or a secondary gain. In the modern mentoring, you will learn how to test your hypnosis and the rehearsal test um, as well. Okay, so you will learn all that. You can always ask the unconscious what the restriction is when testing, then reframe and reconfirm that they can accept it. So if you'd like to learn that technique, that's one of the more advanced ones. I love doing it with quit smoking. So you can jump onto the modern mentoring with that. Step number nine is rehearsal. Only get them to rehearse it if it's if you're not using amnesia, okay? So this works great for the analytically minded. So get the client to actually rehearse what it is that they're doing. They're standing proud. They're feeling good. They can actually smile out into the future. So as you're going through that PHS, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel really good. Pull their, Get them to pull their shoulders back. That's how you feel. Like, you know, you're feeling really proud. 
Step number 10 is called self-feeding suggestion loop, okay? So this is called the backup of the identity. You create the PHS that piggybacks off a previous session as well. This makes the suggestion even stronger. That's why you can come across someone who's really, really funny, and then an hour later, they'll tell another part of the joke that started at the start of the evening, and you start laughing about it all over again. So that's making a piggyback of loops. So for example, for example, if you're doing a PHS for a smoker, you will say, you're a non-smoker and you're happy. I am happy as a non-smoker. The non-smoker part is the identity part. Your happy is the is the backup part. So it piggybacks each other. So the smoker to the happy to the happy to the smoker. It creates that loop. Okay, and this is why you are doing it. It's it's telling them it's because it makes them happy when they're a non-smoker. So that's known as the piggyback. And 11 is to induce amnesia and break state. You learn about breaking state in the previous video. Amnesia helps also to lock in the suggestion. Your client is suggestible for up to six hours after a PHS is given. So when amnesia is introduced, it can negate the anti-suggestions from the external world. So in other words, those people that can derail this client's success. You can learn more about hypnotic amnesia in the modern mentoring in the advanced techniques. So say for for example, your client has come in for quit smoking, they're feeling fantastic, they're like, yes, I am a non-smoker, I am doing this, and then they get in their car and the partner says, so did it work? Do you feel like a smoke? That's that negative PHS that people are doing externally that they don't even understand that they're doing, they're actually giving that client a suggestion. So for six hours after a hypnotic hypnotic period, your client can be open to that suggestion being undone by anti-suggestions from the ones that they love, the, the ones that want the best for them. But the problem is that most people in this world are negative instigators and they're always like, what if you fail? Instead of, but what if you don't? That's the problem. So once you introduce amnesia, then you break the state, that PHS will be sucked in via the unconscious and then all of a sudden the mind will be like, <gasps> Wow, yes, I am doing this, okay? So like I said before, you can learn these advanced techniques in the modern mentoring. Just simply tap on the link. And that's it. That's how you do a fantastic PHS. Now, more stuff is available in the manual. If you'd like to become certified, then please tap on that link, okay? So next time I'm going to be talking about awakening techniques because your client can awaken out of hypnosis in all different ways and you need to know how to deal with that, how to get your best results for your client and how to get them to awaken out of hypnosis because you don't want them to be sitting there 10 minutes later still... You need to understand how to get the awakening techniques going and how to help your client rise up out of the hypnosis so that they can still be in a calm and relaxed state for when they leave that session. So I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.